G'day Bomber fans, our final preseason match is done, we went out to GMHBA, faced the Cats, looked a lot better than we did last week, but there is also lots that really went wrong, big injuries, final quarter fade outs, there's a lot to talk about here, uh, let's get into it. Quick quarter by quarter recap, the game started really well, a lot of our issues last week seemingly solved themselves, our pressure was immense, we forced the Cats to be on the back foot, we had all the territory early and we, we were using the ball so well going inside 50, unlike last week, we um we started off with some great parish play to set up Matt Guelphy, who decided to go for an outside of the boot check side set shot from 15 meters out pretty much directly in front which I love you got to keep that up uh, we need more of that in the game those valuable points making yourself look silly as well it isn't just a Guelphy issue I know a lot of people are pounding on him uh, it's a league-wide plague uh, no one knows how to kick drop punts anymore but it is embarrassing Guelphy is clearly uh, he's lost confidence a bit because he missed a set shot against the Saints from pretty much the exact same position last week uh, so there's something wrong there the Cats kicked the first couple of goals. Uh, we piled on four in a row after that. Led the first turn by seven, but probably should have been up by more. The second quarter was also really pleasing. We picked up where we left off from. It was another narrow lead at halftime, but again, it felt like we were the much better team. And I don't know if that's because of my bias and eyes fixed on the club, looking at the positives. But it did feel like we were the much better team. Let me know if you disagree. I think the stats would probably back me up. We were so good out of the midfield, beating that big Geelong engine room. We were so good at locking the ball with our half from forward pressure. Maybe a bit iffy letting the Cats find space on the way back, but I'll get to that later. I know people are talking about the last quarter fade out, but I think it started in the third term for me. We had our biggest lead in a term, so might feel weird to, weird to say that. We led by 10 points, but it was only really due to Geelong's conversion. They had six behinds, no goals, had a lot more of the play, and I think you can pin it down to personnel. Peter Wright left and clearly left a hole in the forward line. Ridley obviously suffered that quad injury. Langford was on and off being managed with what I believe was just a corky, had ice on his leg at the end of the game. Redmond as well, I think, was rested a lot in the second half. We also just slowed down heaps. You could uh, see us find some energy for specific moments and minutes, which I think can be attributed to situational play. But the queue was in the racket stages here and then in completion in the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter, as I said, we gave up. Not worried about that. I think honestly preferred that uh, rather than us give effort and suffer another important injury. Uh, they kicked five goals to our one, completely dominated. A few worries that I will get to, but overall I would pin it down to a lack of effort, which as I said, is perfectly fine, but overall really pleasing for the most part. Uh, so let's get onto the positives, the things I liked. Forward pressure, how good was that? We had 17 tackles inside 50. I want you to try and find me a time we did that last season because I don't think there'd be any. That is a really good sign early. Guelphy was really prominent early, although he had uh, minimal impact with ball in hand. Hind, when he came on, was great, I think. I reckon he's leading that pressure forward spot for me. I honestly think their pecking order is uh, Hind, Guelphy, and Menzi last. It's been changing every week, which I think is a good thing, but Menzi is a bit out of form. He's the one I didn't really find much uh, good to say about. I do want to highlight two guys here, though. The first is Jake Stringer. I thought he was just about our most prominent pressure forward, which just isn't his role. He, he does this when fit, though. He chases, he tackles, but he is supposedly out of form, people say, unfit and really heavily uh, involved, not just in our goals, but with our forward 50 lockdown. He's proving people wrong. He had the most inside 50 tackles. And the other guy I want to talk about is Harry Jones. I feel like he's trying to play himself back into form by being involved around the pill. There were some moments where he did not look like a lanky, almost two meter forward. His tackling was fantastic. His uh, around the ground play was really promising, really active, not as much in front of goals, but I thought he showed why he should play round one. He lacked a bit when Wright wasn't there in the second half, but his first half was promising. And I think it came from that pressure, being involved in any way he can. It was awesome to see the team as a whole lift here after last week, which was just dismal. Hopefully this continues throughout the year. The midfield mix started to look good. I thought last week it was a shambles. Uh, Durham looked lost. The guys looked bored and tired. We saw a more AFL attitude this week, which I expected. I said we would be a bit more intense this week, and we saw that. Durham was great. I think we saw why his move to the guts eventuated. Him and Setterfield really gave us a presence there against some big guys. He had a great midfield defense, Durham and Setterfield as well. Uh, which we needed last year. Uh, so to have those two guys there as options is great. We broke even on the clearance sheet, one stoppage clearances for once, and I think that comes down to Todd Goldstein. He is our number one ruck. I don't care what you say. Drape's craft is never going to be that uh, good. Nothing on Draper. I'm just more praising one of the best hit-out rucks of all time. Goldstein still has it. He's so clever. He doesn't just win hit-outs, but put the, puts them in the right areas. I thought Brian battled well when he came on. Seemed to win most ruck contests. It was good to see, but... 
but Goldstein is just miles ahead. I love that performance. Really keen to see how he goes this year. I think he can unlock Draper to be that dangerous roam around the ground tall, uh, if he plays regularly, that is. Our back line, especially in that first half, I just loved. This is a bogey team for us with uh, really incredible key forwards. Uh, they always get on top of us, but it didn't look that way. We locked them down, had them struggling to find options inside 50 when they weren't locked down. There were times when structure broke down, which I'll get to later, but Cameron and Hawkins had one goal between them, despite playing most of the game. I thought Mackay was great. He is so solid. Um, Andy McGrath thought he was fantastic. He was brilliant in that first half. That is exactly what we want to see. He wavered a bit later on, but that first half was just phenomenal. And Zach Reed, this guy's a breath of fresh air. I love him. He's quickly becoming one of my favorite players. He's still so young. You do see those moments of inexperience creep through, which you don't see from Ben Mackay, but he led the ground for intercept marks, for spoils. He was really good yet again. It's great to see. He gets beaten a bit in one-on-ones, which needs to change, and it will change with time, but the potential is clearly there. I think aside from that, it was just great to see all the recruits firing for a full game together. It would have been good to see Caddy as well. Unfortunately, he didn't play. But I think we've seen enough to trust the decisions made. Uh, Makai, as I said, was really solid. Goldie, I really love what he gives us. Uh, the other two I haven't talked about yet. Dersma, I thought he was a lot poorer this week than he was against the Saints. But he's still active, uh, especially hen uh, lending a hand down back. His ball use was pretty poor at times, and his decision-making, especially deep in D50, left a little to be desired, but I was really impressed last week. And Jade Gresham, he was awesome. A few goals, a few more goal assists. He's involved in everything up forward. He's so crafty. He gives us a lot of creativity. So yeah, the recruits are clearly up and about, which is good to see. All right, what I didn't like about the game, a few things uh, to start with. Jordan Ridley, I've said many times he is our most important player. What he gives us both with and without ball in defense. So to see him go down with a quad injury, the same quad he injured late last season, it, it's horrible. Should be out for the first few rounds, I would say. And you saw the defense crumble without him. He looked a lot less solid after he came off. Again, also can be attributed to the drop-off in intensity, but it has to be noted how poor we looked without Ridley. It puts a lot of pressure on Martin, who usually would be roaming forward a lot more, knowing Ridley is the calm head and good ball user back there. Um, it takes away our intercepting ability and means we can't attack from defense as well as we usually would. I think it's a real worry having, having him out. There are two guys that we really can't replace, Merritt and Ridley, and one of them is injured. I just worry because our hardest run of games is between rounds two and uh, six or seven. So without him, it'll be tough to get through those games. The first things for, uh, first in preseason matches, you want to get through unscathed. Uh, so this really puts a bit of a stain on the outing, a big negative. I'll continue to talk about the defense. I liked it a lot, but there were clearly some worrying signs, even when Ridley was on the field. Uh, we got caught out pretty easily when they were on the hop. A few occasions where Cameron was out on his own, Shannon Neal at one stage. There was an early marking contest between Tom Hawkins and Nick Martin. It's hard enough defending these guys as it is, but I think when we're pushing forward with power from Redmond and Martin, sometimes on the way back, we get caught out a bit. Same goes for when Merritt was stationed there as well late in the game. Used the ball well, but had a bad moment letting Myers or Close, I think it was, get free. And I think that shows from our early dominance at the contest, but lack of scoreboard, um, or so, I guess dominance. Uh, we were well on top, I would say, but really couldn't kick them out of the game. They found it a lot easier to score when they went forward compared to when we did. Uh, and in fact... I think we probably should have lost by more in the end. They were poor in front of the sticks. Also, some individuals. Wright was kept down, but we saw the impact he had on the game uh, as the target when he was out of it. Uh, it was harder to score with him not there. Laverde was really poor when he came on. That was uncharacteristically poor. Needs to lift with Ridley now injured. Guelph, he was all right at times, but just so frustrating in front of goal. He just doesn't fin finish off those hard plays as he should as a forward. And Menzi, I don't know what's happened with him. He has just lost what he had last year. Like I said earlier, if I had to pick between Guelphie, Menzi, and Hind, the other two get in ahead of Menzi for me. Archie Perkins, I would go as far as to say he was our worst player. His spot in the side is seriously at risk. I don't know if he's carrying a knock or an injury, but he just looks spent from the first minute. Really, really shocking game from him. Probably the worst I've seen him play. Best on ground votes, Wanda Andy McGrath. I thought he was best on ground early. His defensive work was unreal. And his ball use as well looked a lot better. Um, and speaking of ball use, Nick Martin, two goals, almost 30 touches, almost 600 meters gained. 
Um, he had the most, um, I guess, ranking points, you would say. But I just think Darcy Parrish had the biggest impact on the match in the guts. I thought he was electric. His kicking is so much better. You can trust him going forward. His midfield craft was nuts, and his pressure around the ball was just elite. He is looking ominous heading into the season. That is all, though. Video done, pre-season done, thankfully. Uh, next up, we have the regular home and away season, just a couple of weeks away. So get keen for that. Like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new. And as always, go Bombers.